Uh, you're also describing the, 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 the seesaw between um, practicality and imagination. I mean, well, they, they meet yeah. on, your, on your studio table and they meet uh, in the theater stage. I mean, what's mm. practical and what's your imagination and how do you fit it together? Well, I think that, I mean, you know, it's again, you have all of these layers that you're, you're, you're sort of wading through, I think. And so, you know, the first, you know, there's the word and then you begin to understand the word and then there's maybe the music and then there's always this argument which is, you know, has more weight is the word than music in opera. and then. And then you have this collaboration, not only with the director, but with the performers that are in the piece, which you mentioned before. But it's also, on, from my point, from my end, my collaboration now, because I do less costume, is out with the, with the technical crew in, in the theater. So, you know, I might present something that's completely impractical, um, you know, a table with three legs, and, and say, but we have to have the table with three legs and because it's so it's trying to discover how to you know because part of the beauty of theater is you're making almost impossible structures sometimes things that are of a kind of of the world of the imagination on stage they're not houses they're not apartments they don't have to be there forever and you you can so you can build a kind of you know, an imaginary environment. You can have a window that floats in the air because, because you can, you know. So, and sometimes the propositions that I put forward are, can be very complicated for theaters. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working on a production at the moment. Um, <laughs> I'm working on a production at the moment, which is, um, which is the act two, the stage is covered with blood. Um, and How much? A lot of blood, like hustle. well, about that much, you know, about that much, and but it's like a big surf liquid area of liquid blood, yeah. And um, so, for a repertory host, that's a huge problem because they have to sort of figure out a way to get it on and off stage, during, you know, with an intermission break in between, and get rid of it. And what do you get? So, the design of that becomes the design of this blood becomes part of the uh, the collaboration that I'd have with the technical team is affects the design of that. It affects into the shape of it, the size of it, how far downstage it is. And so you're constantly having to respond to what's taking place. So for example, they say, Michael, we can't have the blood that far downstage because we can't drain it. Therefore, can you create something down there because I can only have my drain valves up here, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And you yeah, yeah. And so you're sort of responding and reacting. And then, and now, you know, there are two different theaters producing it. So there's one theater in Lyon and in New York and there. So, and one's small and one's larger. And so they both kind of have to, I have to, satisfy the needs of both of them and that is affecting the, sh the actual physical shape of it you know it's not something unusual but it's another factor um, and so then you work through those ideas and then things and this is act this is blood that the the singers will walk through wade yeah. through yeah lie down in yeah 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 because it's the piece is parsifal and right. Ultimately, you know, the first act, one of the discoveries that Francois Girard, who's directing, and I made was that, you know, the first act is about this, you know, precious piece of blood, and then the second act is a kind of massive amounts of blood, but it means nothing. Um, so it becomes the central image of the piece, and the Parsifal is about religion. It's one of the longest operas that Wagner ever wrote. It's, very complicated. Um, we don't want to really get into that right now, but anyway, so um, yes, yeah, so you have this collaboration with the technical staff. How does it work with costumes? And the costume uh, department said, "I we cannot clean those costumes. I yeah, cannot yeah. have so and so lie down in that dress yeah, because yeah. Uh, we'd have to have a different dress every night, and there's no budget." So yeah. What do you do there? Well, I'm not, luckily I'm not doing the costumes, so it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like. I'm just creating the problem. Um, though, 
No, I mean, you know, you try to f kind of figure your way around all these problems all the time. Oh, where are you when you create those problems? When you say, I want a three-legged table, uh -huh. and I know it won't stand up, and uh -huh. I don't care. Right. I want to have three legs. Uh -huh. Do it. Right. Or when but I never say do it. I think that's the difference. I think, I mean, I, well, I say, you know what? I think if we can have a three-legged table on stage, it's going to be really exciting. And I think, you know, half the time, that's why we all work in the theater, because we want do something that is very, you know, exciting to the public. So um, it's not, you know, I'm creating these, sometimes I'm making these, these, these designs which are very complicated and, um, but it's a challenge. You know, I don't know, you know, whether they're possible, um, but, you know, sometimes people rise to the challenge and sometimes they don't. I mean, with the, the situation of the blood, it was, it's a very complicated problem. But the theaters involved have all risen to the challenge of it. And it'll be very exciting for the audience. And I think it will highlight something very central to the opera um, about the body of Christ and about, because it's also based on, you know, a lot of the research we were looking at was devastated landscapes. So it's a little bit about that and it's about there are all sorts of things. It's hard to explain without right. actually right. showing the design and going through the whole piece. And um, how much does, I mean, when you describe blood on the stage, or you describe the three-legged table, or the, the metal ship bowl, whatever right. floor, uh -huh. do you think metaphor? Or is it uh -huh. just what comes out? Or are you searching for metaphor? Or uh -huh. do you not care about metaphor? No, I, you know, you, you, there's, yes, no, you look at a certain level of metaphor when you're, when you're working on these pieces. I mean, F Wagner, for example, the, something I've discovered a little bit from doing a few of them is that there is a, there's a kind of larger theme in which the piece sits, but then there's a very small, there are very small um, interactions between the characters. Um, that are expressed in this larger music. Um, so there might be a scene very intimate between a father and a daughter. Um, they might be gods, but they're still f still related, like you know, father, daughter, father, son. Um, so, but they're incredibly intimate moments. But they're in a larger theme. They're in a larger metaphor that they're all uh, they're sitting inside of. Um, you know, for example, in the ring, it's in this. The larger picture is greed and how it's really destroying everyone. Um, and so you have that, you have, the, you have the characters sitting inside of that larger metaphor. So I feel that it's, I'd like to be able to kind of give that a little boost, a little highlight um, without, you know, overpowering the situation with the metaphor because you can destroy the intimacy of the of the action on stage, if you know everybody's wandering around, wandering around dressed as a cube, you know, or I like know, everyone as a cube. I yeah, just think that's a great idea. Cube, <laughs> yeah. No, it's interesting. I mean, some productions are really. It's, sometimes it's really interesting to go completely the other way and explore it in a different way altogether. I think you know. Um, I mean, I'm also think, I'm thinking way back an early design of yours, a Spring Awakening at Cannes Stage with uh, Derek Goldby, yeah. and early days, I've seen around 1986 or something. Uh, but I, to this day, I remember kind of the push of that design. I can't tell you what the metaphor was, but the right. ramp and the uh, way it sat there impinged itself mm. inside me before anything had happened on stage. Oh, so right. Okay. No, I mean, the strong metaphor in that was that there was this very, almost like a wall, where then the adults lived on one side and there was, when the wall would lift up, there was this um, kind of land of adolescent sexuality, which was free and beautiful and had its own rules and was kind of messy and kind of glowing. And, um, and then there was the, you know, which is very much part of that piece. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, uh, so there was, we always knew that there had to be this kind of pull and push of those two worlds in one way. And it was kind of like a guillotine that set, so it sort of cut the um, adolescent world of the sort of beautiful, glowing adolescent world off with a 
which was a big chalkboard, which came down like that, which also had practical right. reasons because they were in school. Um, um, you know, they had to be sort of in and out of school.